Welcome music lovers to the fascinating exploration into the life and legacy of one of the most influential figures in music history, Christine McVie. Join us as we delve into the highs and lows, the triumphs and challenges, of this remarkable artist's career. So let's dive in. Christine McVie born Christine Anne Perfect on the 12th of July 1943 in Greenodd, Lancashire in England. McVie spent her formative years in the Bearwood neighborhood of Smedic, situated near Birmingham. Her father Cyril, was deeply immersed in the world of music as a concert violinist and a lecturer at St. Peter's College of Education in Saltley, Birmingham. He also imparted his knowledge by teaching violin at St. Philip's Grammar School in Birmingham. McVie's mother Beatrice, possessed unique talents as a medium, psychic, and faith healer. Additionally, her grandfather served as an organist at Westminster Abbey, further enriching her family's musical heritage. Introduced to the piano at the tender age of four, McVie's formal musical education didn't begin until she was 11 years old. It was then that a local musician, a friend of her brother John, reignited her passion for music. Initially trained in classical piano, McVie pursued this path until the age of 15. However, her trajectory shifted towards rock and roll when her brother obtained a Fats Domino songbook, sparking a new musical direction and against her father's aspirations for her to become a concert pianist. Alongside Domino, the Everly brothers were among her earliest influences, shaping her musical tastes and aspirations. McVie dedicated five years to studying sculpture at Moseley School of Art in Birmingham, aspiring to become an art teacher. During her time at art school, she crossed paths with emerging musicians in the British blues scene. Her entry into the world of music occurred when she connected with guitarist Stan Webb and bassist Andy Sylvester from the band Sounds of Blue, who recognized her musical abilities and invited her to join them. Additionally, McVie collaborated with Spencer Davis on vocals. However, by the time she completed her art studies, Sounds of Blue had disbanded. Facing financial constraints, she relocated to London, where she briefly worked as a department store window dresser. In 1967, McVie seized an opportunity to join Chicken Shack, a blues band formed by Andy Sylvester and Stan Webb, as their pianist, keyboard player, and backing vocalist. Her involvement marked the beginning of Chicken Shack's journey, highlighted by their debut release, It's OK With Me Baby, which featured McVie's composition and vocals. During her tenure with the band spanning two studio albums, McVie showcased her genuine affinity for the blues through her Sonny Thompson-style piano playing and soulful voice. Notably, Chicken Shack achieved success with their rendition of Ellington Jordan's I'd Rather Go Blind, featuring McVie on lead vocals. During her tenure with Chicken Shack, McVie's musical journey would intersect with the band Fleetwood Mac's path as both groups frequently crossed paths while touring. Their shared affiliation with the Blue Horizon record label provided opportunities for collaboration, leading McVie to contribute piano as a session musician on Peter Green's tracks for Fleetwood Mac's second studio album, Mr. Wonderful. It was during this time, McVie and Fleetwood Mac bassist John McVie would fall in love and marry in 1968. Feeling that she would not see her husband if they were in different bands, McVie would leave Chicken Shack in 1969. During the same year her exceptional talent would garner recognition, earning her Melody Maker Awards for the UK's Best Female Vocalist in 1969 and again in 1970. Encouraged to continue her career, she recorded a debut solo studio album, Christine Perfect, which was later reissued as the legendary Christine Perfect album. Her talents caught the attention of Fleetwood Mac, and she was invited to join the band as a keyboard player in 1970 following Peter Green's departure. Already having provided uncredited contributions to their album, Kiln House, including piano and backing vocals, McVie's deep admiration for the Peter Green era Fleetwood Mac and her dedication to learning their repertoire during rehearsals solidified her place within the band, filling the void left by Green's departure and contributing significantly to their evolving sound. Upon joining Fleetwood Mac, McVie quickly established herself as a cornerstone of the band's lineup. Her arrival proved pivotal, as the band had previously contemplated dissolution, with Mick Fleetwood later acknowledging McVie as the vital glue that revitalized their cohesion and sound. McVie's impact was immediately felt on the band's first studio album following her inclusion as a full member, Future Games, released in 1971. This album marked the beginning of her collaboration with American guitarist and songwriter Bob Welch, who had taken over from founding member Jeremy Spencer, further enriching Fleetwood Mac's evolving musical landscape. In 1974, McVie along with the rest of Fleetwood Mac, made the significant move to California, coinciding with Bob Welch's departure following the release of their album, Heroes Are Hard To Find. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham of Buckingham Nicks then joined the band, introducing a dynamic shift with the inclusion of two female lead vocalists who also contributed to songwriting. McVie swiftly formed a close bond with Nicks, discovering their voices blended seamlessly. 
In the band's first studio album with this new lineup, Fleetwood Mac in 1975, McVie took center stage on four tracks, including Warm Ways, Over My Head, Say You Love Me, and Sugar Daddy, while also sharing a songwriting credit with Buckingham for World Turning. The album yielded several chart-topping hits, notably McVie's Over My Head and Say You Love Me, both achieving significant success on the Billboard Top 20 singles chart and marking Fleetwood Mac's breakthrough into the American radio airwaves and national charts. In 1976, McVie embarked on a romantic relationship with the band's lighting director while on tour, serving as the inspiration behind her composition, You Make Loving Fun, a chart-topping hit from their subsequent album, Rumors in 1977. Among her notable contributions to the album was, Don't Stop, which soared into the top five on the charts. Additionally, Rumors featured McVie's poignant ballad, Songbird, a tender piece showcasing her piano prowess with accompaniment by Lindsay Buckingham on acoustic guitar. Before the conclusion of the Rumors tour, the McVies ended their marriage, with McVie writing the song, Don't Stop, for her husband as the divorce was going through. In 1979, McVie achieved a US Top 20 hit with, Think About Me, from the double studio album Tusk, although it didn't replicate the immense success of Rumors. After a hiatus post-Tusk tour, the band regrouped in 1981 to record the studio album, Mirage, at Chateau Druville's studio in France. Mirage, released in 1982, propelled the band back to the summit of the US charts, featuring the top five hit, Hold Me, co-penned by McVie. The inspiration behind the song stemmed from her tumultuous relationship with Beach Boys drummer Dennis Wilson. Additionally, McVie's composition, Love in Store, emerged as the album's third single, reaching number 22 on the charts in early 1983. McVie's second solo studio album, Christine McVie, released in 1984, featured the hits, Got a Hold on Me, and Love Will Show Us How. Although a third single, I'm the One, was released, it did not chart. McVie described the album as honest, stating it wasn't the most adventurous album in the world, but it was honest and pleasing to her own ears. In 1986, McVie married keyboardist Eddie Quintilla, with whom she co-wrote songs for subsequent Fleetwood Mac albums. She rejoined Fleetwood Mac in 1987 for the Tango in the Night studio album, marking the band's significant success since rumors, reaching the top five in both the UK and US. McVie's Little Lies, co-written with Quintilla, emerged as the album's standout hit. Another notable McVie single from the album, Everywhere, peaked at number 4 in the UK and number 14 in the US. In 1990, the band Now Without Buckingham, recorded Behind the Mask, which achieved gold status in the US. McVie's song, Save Me, landed in the US Top 40. The album debuted at number 1 on the UK album chart and attained platinum status. Additionally, McVie's Sky's the Limit, the second US single from the album, enjoyed success on the adult contemporary chart. After her father Cyril Perfect passed away in 1990 during the Behind the Mask tour, McVie opted to retire from touring. However, she remained with Fleetwood Mac and contributed a new track, Love Shines, to the 1992 box set, 25 Years, The Chain, and five songs for the 1995 studio album Time, following Nick's departure. During the mid-90s, Fleetwood and John McVie collaborated with Buckingham on his solo project, with Christine McVie providing vocals and keyboards for some tracks. A reunion was discussed, leading to Nick's rejoining the band, and the release of the 1997 live album, The Dance, which topped the US album charts. McVie resumed touring, performing for the band's 1998 induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as well as at the Grammy Awards and the Brit Awards. However, she chose not to continue with Fleetwood Mac after 1998, citing a developed fear of flying as her reason. After the dance tour, McVie returned to England to be closer to her family and kept a low profile until 2000 when she accepted an honorary doctorate in music from the University of Greenwich. Five years after leaving Fleetwood Mac, she and Quintilla divorced. In a 2004 interview, McVie revealed her disinterest in contemporary pop music and expressed a preference for classic FM. Although she appeared as a session musician on Fleetwood Mac's last studio album, Say You Will, and attended their final UK performance on the Say You Will tour in London in December 2003, she did not join her former bandmates on stage. Additionally, she released her third solo studio album, In the Meantime, in the same year. McVie received the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors Gold Badge of Merit in 2006 and was recognized by Paste magazine as one of the greatest living songwriters. Despite ongoing Fleetwood Mac activities, she didn't join their final UK performance in 2009. Stevie Nicks expressed doubt about McVie rejoining the band during their 2012 tour announcement, citing her extended absence. In 2013, it was announced that McVie was working on a solo album, but it was never released. 
In 2013, Christine McVie made a notable return to the stage after 15 years, performing with the Mick Fleetwood Blues Band in Hawaii alongside Mick Fleetwood and ex-Fleetwood Mac guitarist Rick Vito. Later that year, she joined Fleetwood Mac on stage for the first time in 15 years at the O2 Arena in London, playing Don't Stop to an ecstatic audience. Following this, Mick Fleetwood announced her reunion with the band during a concert in Maui on January 11, 2014, and her official return to Fleetwood Mac was confirmed two days later. In August 2016, Mick Fleetwood revealed that while Fleetwood Mac had ample recorded material, most of it lacked Stevie Nicks' input. However, Lindsay Buckingham and Christine McVie had penned numerous songs for the new project, with Fleetwood praising McVie's prolific songwriting. He expressed hope for more than just a duet album, citing the quality of their collaborative work. The collaborative album, Lindsay Buckingham Christine McVie, released on June 9, 2017, preceded by the single, In My World. A 38-day tour followed from June 21 to November 16, featuring eight tracks from the album alongside some Fleetwood Mac classic songs, with band The Wallflowers opening on selected nights. In June, they appeared on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon to perform, In My World. Additional North American shows were added in August, including ones in Los Angeles and New York City. Another North American leg began in October, incorporating 22 more shows. In July 2017, Fleetwood Mac headlined the Classic West concert in Los Angeles and the Classic East concert in New York City. On April 9, 2018, the band announced Mike Campbell and Neil Finn would join to replace lead guitarist Lindsay Buckingham. In 2019, McVie was featured in the BBC documentary, Fleetwood Mac's Songbird, Christine McVie. In 2022, a compilation album titled, Songbird, a solo collection, was released. McVie's other works and collaborations include with Christopher Cross where she sang on the song, Never Stop Believing, on his 1988 studio album Back of My Mind, as well as with Bob Welch on his solo version of, Sentimental Lady. Personally, McVie was married twice. Her first marriage was to John McVie in 1968, with Peter Green serving as best man. Instead of a traditional honeymoon, they celebrated with Joe Cocker at a hotel in Birmingham before hitting the road with their bands. Although they divorced in 1976, they remained friends and professional partners. McVie's second marriage was to Portuguese keyboardist and songwriter Eddie Quintilla on October 18, 1986. They collaborated on several songs, including Little Lies, before divorcing in 2003 with Quintilla passing away in 2020. In the early 1970s McVie's brother, John Perfect, contributed saxophone to Fleetwood Mac's album, Future Games, while his son, Dan Perfect, later produced, played guitar on and contributed to McVie's 2004 solo album, In the Meantime. In 1997, McVie made her children's television debut on the Nick Jr. series, Allegra's Window, appearing in an episode titled, Christine Stops By. During Fleetwood Mac's peak in the 1970s, McVie resided in Los Angeles. In 1990, she moved to a grade 2 listed Tudor Manor House in Wickham Brew, Kent, where she retired after leaving Fleetwood Mac in 1998. She found inspiration in the country setting, writing songs and restoring the house. After rejoining Fleetwood Mac in 2014, she spent more time in London and put the house on the market in 2015. Sadly on November 30, 2022, it was reported that Christine McVie had passed away in the hospital at the age of 79 due to a stroke. She had also been battling metastatic cancer with an unknown primary origin. McVie was later cremated, and her ashes were distributed among her family and friends. A celebration of her life was held at Little Beach House in Malibu, attended by her Fleetwood Mac bandmates Mick Fleetwood and Stevie Nicks, along with former bandmate Lindsay Buckingham. In a statement released after her passing, Fleetwood Mac described McVie as, the best musician anyone could have in their band and the best friend anyone could have in their life. Stevie Nicks, another member of the band, expressed that McVie had been her, best friend in the whole world. And there you have it. As we conclude our exploration of Christine McVie's life and career, we honor her enduring impact on the world of music. From timeless classics to unforgettable performances, her legacy will continue to inspire generations of fans around the globe. Thank you for joining us, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Take care and bye for now.